Miss McGuire, sixth grade class, monotheism, polytheism. Well, greetings. Thanks for joining us. I'm Devon. And I'm Faith. We're here tonight with the Passage of Lost Television to get down to the nitty gritty about religion in the ancient world. That's right, Faith. Our segment tonight focuses on monotheism and polytheism, and it promises to be a great show. Did you know that monotheism and polytheism are both Greek words? I did not know that, Devon. Tell me more. Well, theos is the Greek word for God. Is that why theology is a study of religion? Yes, indeed. Monos is the Greek word for one. I get it. Monos, one. Theos, God. One God. Right. Now think about this. Poly is the Greek word for many. So polytheism means many gods. Exactly. And if you get the two confused, just try thinking of other words that begin with mono or poly. That will help keep things straight in your head. Like monorail, the train at Disney ride that rides on one track, and polygon, a many-sided geometric form. Excellent, but on to our show. Today we are interviewing a random citizen about the ancient world to get their perspective on monotheism and polytheism. <laughs> Hello there. Salutations. <laughs> May the gods smile favorably upon you. You said God. Does this mean that you are polytheistic? I don't know. I don't know what polytheistic means. This is the 3rd century B.C. after all. I do know what the word... With the world around us has the protection of many different gods and goddesses. These divine beings look out for us, humans, plants, animals, and the world at large. In turn, we have to honor them with such things of worship and rituals like sacrifices. Get out of my way. I am the great god of war. You want me on your side when things get bad. Inspire, I inspire enemies. I bring pain and suffering. I am a god to be most truly feared. Often me and I will lay your cities to waste. My apology. Do not forget me either. I am the god of bad weather. A frown from me can ruin your harvest with a plague of insects. I can also level cities with floods and fires. People look at me and expose natural disasters. In truth, I just love staring up chaos. <laughs> it seems that polytheism is very frightening, Divine. Don't you agree? Before you agree, let me speak. Not all gods and goddesses of the ancient world are frightening. I am the goddess of hearth and home. I look out and take care of families. I need no special altar to sacrifice. Everywhere there is a heart, there is a home in my temple. So you are a good sort of goddess. Yes, a peaceful and cozy goddess. Also, if these two monsters here with me wreck someone's heart at home, they have me to answer to. I am very loving and a protective goddess. Thank, Thank goodness. goodness. What have you to say to all of this, random ancient citizen? That I will honor and worship all the gods and goddesses that I know about, and even the ones that I don't know about. It makes sense to try to keep everyone happy. <clears throat> Do not worry. Soon the light of monotheism, the worship of one God, will spread across the planet. You will no longer have the slum of these three morons. So by honoring you, ancient man can do away with worrying about all these others? Yes. After all, they exist because the world lacks scientific explanations of natural phenomena. This is an outrage. How dare you? Although monotheism is the ancient world is limited to Judaism in Israel and Akhenaten in Egypt, I can promise you that monotheism is the way of the future. This is fascinating. What say you, random ancient citizen? Old habits are hard to break. I doubt I'll be changing any of my religious practices, but I don't know what my grandchildren will do. I guess we'll have to stay tuned to PBTV and find out. Excellent notion, and I do think our time is up. Thanks for tuning in. Everyone say good night. Good night. That's a wrap.